Okay, um, good evening, every one of you. It's a great pleasure for uh, the Tibet House that we're organizing this teaching by the most venerable Geshe Shitapir Goshi, and who is one of the legendary the masters in terms of philosophy, logic, psychology, and um, the a great practitioner, great master, um, the one of the greatest legends of our time. So without much ado, we will turn to the the, the book, the brown book, the Blaze of Non Blue Bodhicitas. I hope you all have this book. Everyone, this is a great opportunity for us, not only for us to, to partake in the, the teaching, let us also let others take part in this by bringing them in, the, in your own visualization. And um, all the person who works up there is watching us, they are watching us, and you are leading this. Okay, um, with that in mind, let's turn to page three. And you should be with compassion, you to the Magda Dharma, to dispel all perverted views, to you the Buddha of Dharma, I be homage. And you should be with compassion, you to the Magda Dharma, to dispel all perverted views, to you the Buddha of Dharma, I be homage. And you should be with compassion, you to the Magda Dharma, to dispel all perverted views, to you the Buddha of Dharma, I be homage. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prefer to the consummate Buddha, the Supreme of all teachers, of all of the beings which is free of elaborations. I prefer to the mothers of the hearers, the Bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas, who through the launch of all these hearers seeking pacification and complete peace, who through the launch of past causes was have been migrated to achieve the aims of the world, and who through the possession of combinations. <coughs> there are two teachings. The one who has transformed into the life guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teacher, Sukhad, and protector to your 
development registrations. Now one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations is endowed with that one bodies of the vast and the profound for ten editions for the forever noble that grace to you the Buddha and make restorations. I go for refuge and show my light to the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha by my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and show my light to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha by my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and show my light to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha by my accumulations of practice of giving and so forth May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sanye Jodha Zoghe Jodha Mga Chanjo Bardo Dhani Kyatsu Chi Bhagye Jin Sogye Me Sonam Ghe Dola Benjir Sanye Kuvara Yansho Sanye Jodha Zoghe Jodha Mga Chanjo Bardo Dhani Kyatsu Chi Bhagwe jinsu gibe tsonam ki Dola benjir sangye nubare jo Sangye jo dan sogi chonam ga Chanju bardu dani kya su chi Bhagwe jinsu gibe tsonam ki Dola benjir sangye nubare jo In spite of wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence all sentient beings. Okay, as we start mantra, those of us, those of us who know this, we have to say this together, and others can join us by listening to, to us. Om ye dharma he tu rama he tu de Okay, let us turn to 
uh, page 14, uh, praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. <coughs> To the founder, the entire process the destroyer, one gone beyond, the four destroyers, completely perfected, full awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, Lord of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods of human beings, to you the completely and full awakened one, the entire process the destroyer, the glorious conqueror, subdued from the Shaka clan, after faith and equal friends, equal for refuge. When all supreme amongst humans who were born on this earth, who pays of seven strikes and seven supreme in this world, to you who were wise then I prostrate, with pure bodies born supremely pure, which emotion like a golden mountain, being that this is in three worlds, we know the best, how to you are prostrate, with a supreme science face like a spotless moon, colored like gold to you are prostrate, as we like you, the three worlds are not, Incomparable wise one to you are prostrate, the savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the feudomatic with qualities like a vast solution to you that the harbor I prostrate, the purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one part, the sublime pure reality, to the Dhamma that pacifies the prostrate, those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, the holy faith qualified with realization. By devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha I persuade, to not commit any non virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue my authority in this situation. Our visual narration of flame of land, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream of flesh lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these marriage messenger beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue so the four faults and be delivered from Sansara solution. The third by the case of aging, sickness, and death. Okay, page 31, the Heart Sutra Mantra, essence of the, all the teachings of the Buddha, the Mantra. Now we'll say this seven times. <coughs> Sangha 
Um, it is said by Boris of the Shantideva in his book, uh, Boris of the Sweet of Life, that this birth, human birth of the leisure and endowment is very difficult to obtain, and that uh, the, this human birth has the capacity to accomplish all the meaningful, the, the meaningful points, and uh, that if we don't strive in this life, to extract a meaning for one's life, that in future lifetimes, 
is very difficult to obtain this cocaine. So here we see that this, the, the human birth that we have obtained, it is qualified as something which is, the, the, which is of the leisure and of having the qualities of endowment. Um, in ways of the in ways of having they say the opportunities having the potential for us to practice dharma to for us to uh, uh, practice something to transform our mind and then also that there are the facilities not only that you are potent yet you, not only that you have the capacity to do this you also have the the other facilities around us intact for you to um, actually practice the dharma. And uh, the, the reason why this uh, precious human birth, which is endowed with the qualities of tradition and endowment, and why this is so rare to achieve is because of the thinking about the, the causes, thinking of the causes of this the human birth, we see that the causes involve very sophisticated, the, the numerous amount of sophisticated causes, which the thinking of Really, the really engaging these courses is very difficult, and then that the the fact that we are not um, we have not taken birth as the animals or as the lower in, in the lower realms, so that allows us to practice dharma well, and then if we don't strive hard to extract a greater meaning while we have this while we obtain obtain this precious birth, then we are wasting this very precious birth. And that the, the same birth is very difficult to be obtained in the future of times. Oh, that give you Tundu Tava Juba Lasa. Give you Tunda Karas of Juba Resina Mambania, and then to Simba Sum Chamsunga, Chita Toma Lotu Changang, give you Chumus in the middle of Tambut chair. Then a part of Kibu Drinks chair, Kibu Tamas chair, Ramjita Sum Chamsunga. That give you Tango de Karasina. Mia um, as said by Bodhisattva Chandideva, there are three meanings to extract it. The meanings to extract it by the, the person of the low capacity, the person of the middle capacity, and the person of the great capacity. So the person, the, the meaning to extract it by the, the person with the lower capacity is to obtain the precious human birth of the birth of the human beings and the, the birth in the human realm of form in the Celestial being realms by avoiding taking birth in the lower realms such as the, the hell realm, Hanukkah's realm, animal realm, and so forth. So, those teachings meant to help us to take birth in the higher realms, such as the human, human realm and the celestial realms, these fall under the category of the teachings meant for the smallest person. Oh, that didn't do the Buddha Samu they want to let me in the way. It's also the answer, so cheerful, so what? Oh, they never turn around to me in good doors. Then I see some of them, but some of them, they say, some And then, yes, on the case of duty, she had a such ever, never say what it is. If she had never seen up, she had to know him with a two years and a two months out of Chiba is. So I was a chumberman, and so I could go so Nilota, 
so the, <coughs> the meaning of the, the goal uh, meant for the small school person is to take to achieve a favorable birth the next life by putting the unfavorable birth, such as the birth in the lower realms. So how to apply that is by dependence on um, by embracing the causes, the conducive causes, conducive factors or the causes for the higher the favorable births. So what are the causes? So that is knowing that it is the 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 say the act of harming others, act of say out of bad intentions of harming others, and then killing, stealing and so forth, um, like the particularly actions pertaining to the physical and verbal actions, negative actions, they are responsible for the casting us into the low realms. So the basic intention that one should have is to have a sense of the compassion, a sense of the compassion, wanting not to harm others, wanting that the beings are not are not experiencing the beings, other beings they don't experience miseries, the pains, and then wanting that they also have happiness. The way I want happiness, they should also have happiness. The way I don't want suffering, they should also have the they should not have the suffering. So this should be the basic the, the framework of your thinking, of the, the, the teaching of the Buddha grounded on compassion and the loving kindness. And that should help you refrain from engaging in negative actions and help you to engage in a positive the karmas. So the engaging in these two actions, the, in these two actions, refraining the negativities and engaging in positive karmas the rightly um, deserves the cause to project you to the higher the favorable states in your next life. We are talking during the tenure some local to Carcoris, the whole tongue as we kill a kind of father milk or one talk over there. In a father milk or one there to make it on each other, merely in a given that you never said to many of them, and they were told to go around and around. Kumbundoni Nekab <coughs> Now the goal or the meaning <coughs> intended for <coughs> the beings of the middle school, the middle school is not only be satisfied by achieving the higher states or the higher birth, like the human birth or the sentient being birth, because knowing that even if you take birth as a human being, we still have complications, we still have miseries. If we, even if we take birth as the, the asudas, meaning the demigods. The demigods, they also have these so many problems, miseries, particularly miseries pertaining to jealousy. And then even if somebody should take birth <coughs> as um, the, the, the devas and devis, there also there's a problem, the miseries acute, a pain of the fear, the pain due to the fear of having to birth, having to take birth, and the, in the low realms, and the indications of the, the death that you see within this one week, the last one week. So we see that even if we take birth in these, in these favorable states, still we are not really free from the miseries. So while the favorable states taking birth in the uh, human realm and the <coughs> the realm is something very favorable, very good, but it should not be seen as the ultimate goal. 
This is a goal because this is like the stepping stone for us to achieve a goal whereby your miseries should eventually come to an end altogether. So for that matter, so what causes the miseries then? The after taking birth in the favorable states such as the human realm and the devil and demon realm. So what causes or what um, the or what are the things that are responsible for us to still go through miseries is all because of the afflictive emotions, destructive emotions, the glish, the glish or the glacier. So we see that this is the feeling of seeing yourself as one and seeing others as divided, as split from you and having a sense of attachment towards the self, sense of aversion towards others. So this invariably arises, the, leads to all the uh, the destructive emotions. So um, the, we see that now, knowing that all miseries, even if you take the favorable states, but the miseries are um, something which I cannot avoid as long as I'm, I'm under the sway of the afflictive emotions, disturbing emotions, such as attachment, aversion, so forth. So my, the, the next journey, the next step is to cut all my negative emotions so that I don't have to go through miseries altogether. Uh, so this, not only taking birth in the favorable states or the favorable birth next time, but to cut the miseries altogether, that is the, the goal, which is to be, uh, which is the uh, more sophisticated and higher the level of the aspiration, which is, con which is considered as the goal <coughs> inspired by the middle school person. Oh, don't that like you would drink so here, in this case, the, for the, the teaching to be practiced, uh, pertaining to the pertaining to aspire the, with aspiration to achieve the goals, uh, with the goal of cutting the miseries altogether, also referred to as the goal intended by the the middle school person. So there, the while we are pursuing through this journey, we do uh, we still we do still have this self-centered attitude, but a very aggressive form, a very coarse form of the self-centered attitude, and the giving up, the, making a very clean divide between self and others on the basis of religion, on the basis of the ethnicities, on the, you know, on the basis of the social status and so, so forth, and the attachment aversion, very intense form of attachment aversion they arise. And uh, this is what really disturbs the person, but it doesn't mean that when you actually practice the second level of the teaching, um, the self-centered attitude is going to be taught. This is not the case. So what is required is the understanding of the selflessness of person. So the, the, these teaching, the selflessness of person, they become relevant in this context. Oh, <laughs> で、ランケンクセ、ゲンデクンデ。シンピエンバ、トメデテワダ、テワダ、チェバチベ、タッカンゲ、チンジマロシンゲ。ランケンクセ、ゲンデクンデンジ、キムシンデ、シェンデト
Then on that basis, the practice, what is known as the practice of bodhicitta, practice of the the, <coughs> the awakening mind, desiring to become a fully enlightened being, <coughs> to achieve, to, to benefit all beings. So that aspiration, the considering others more precious than oneself, so that this basic driving motivation of bodhicitta, that will lead a person to engage in the and the, the six perfections, practice of the six perfections, such as generosity and so forth. Oh, that and that is an Chesumri Radhi, Tabe Shenche Bahase, Shenditunda for a Ragatunda in the Sami, Ragatunda from the Shenditun Sochen, Jenge Church, Radhi Chen. And during the area, Shenle Rang, Rang the Shenke Church in Matuna, Rang so in a young Shenle Yachada. ジェスチャンチャダメチバチチェイバチ。あ、そんばで、ジブチュムで、そうそうそう、ランチョウソ、え、ランダ、メリタ、キムザンダティソ、チェブレ、ティチャトクマレ。ティヒナヤ、ラン
um, the different practitioners of the three three levels of the practitioners, but we come to realize that the basic, the the basic, and the ground for the all these three practitioners is the practice of the the, the aspiration that that the I should that the beings be free from suffering and that, that the beings be endowed with happiness. So this basic, the, the thought process that we have, um, is a, pertaining to uh, the engaging in the 10 virtuous actions by refraining from the 10 non-virtuous actions. So this forms the basic, the, the main practice, which is so fundamental and important for us, refrain from 10 non-virtuous actions and engaging in the 10 virtuous actions. So some people may think that, oh, these are something to be done by the, the, the initial practitioners. So we have some very important, more important practice. And then you may ignore these practices. So this is where we're going wrong. So what is very important is that this is very fundamental practice. And so this very practice, which may seem to be more associated with the small school Christian practice, the more we practice this, eventually it will turn into, it will develop into the teaching meant for the middle school person, and you practice it further, we see that it can be developed to the, the practice associated with the grade school person. So then finally, wishing to become Buddha for the better of sentient beings will um, make sense to us only through this, the, the practice of cherishing to engage in the 10 virtuous actions, and refrain from eternal virtual action. That plays a very important role in the practice. This should not be missed. So with this basic framework of your intention, setting the setting intention that with, by listening to this discourse, I will learn how to to refrain from the ten non virtuous actions and engage in the ten virtuous actions, ten non virtuous actions, referring to the three physical non virtuous actions, four verbal and the three metal. So with this intention, you could listen to this, the teaching. Oh yeah. That can be done from the share quiet card. That's it, Jemar Jayako, share from the question. What the Indians are called, number two, one is the chicken. That's it, Jemar Jayako said, that number, metal powder, tomia powder, tamia powder, so on. To be able to see it all day. Well, Sanjay, Chuyaki. え、ジョイ、ニンブルティエスオレ。天神デバルジョンです。さっき。ま、ちょうど定型シャンプスよね。ま、ちょうど天神デバルジョン。そうそう、どうも無用で、さっき。そのジャンベドス。で、ジャン
the little bit of digression. Uh, today is just to give an overview, overview of the teaching on dependent origination. And then uh, tomorrow is going to be teaching on in praise of dependent origination, which is available in this book. In this book. So I would suggest that uh, going back home, uh, if you can read this, the, uh, this short text in praise of dependent origination, mm -hmm. which um, the Venerable Kishi will teach tomorrow. Um, it should be on the page. Page 99. Page 99. So I would suggest all of us to read this um, uh, today and tomorrow, and then um, the, that we are prepared that we we'll make the most of the teaching tomorrow. Okay. I'm going back to me. What continue to continue from what she taught is that. Say the, the teaching today is on dependent origination, <coughs> and uh, the, it is said that the, the Buddha's the essence of the, the, the treasure, uh, the treasure store of the Buddha's teachings is the teaching on dependent origination. If you have the understanding on, if you have the understanding of dependent origination, this will automatically uh, make us to have a very refined understanding of the impermanence. The suffering nature of the reality, and also the selflessness nature of, of the phenomena. So the, there's one sutra of, of Buddha. There are so many sutras, so many teachings by the Buddha taught on the concept of dependent origination, one of which is known as Salistamba Sutra, or the Rise Seeking Sutra. So then what happened was that as the Buddha was passing by a rice, the rice field, and the Buddha saw a rice shoot, a rice seedling, and then the Buddha indicated, pointed his finger to the rice seedling, and then said the following sutra that the bhikshus, or the monks, uh, whosoever sees dependent origination will see the Dhamma, and whosoever sees the Dhamma will see the Buddha. So what he was indicating was that whosoever sees dependent origination the dependent origination in terms of how things come into being by dependence, by, by dependence on the causes and conditions, then this person will understand the, the, the real karma, the real karma, the, the, the concept of dependent origination. The cause effect will lead you to understanding the, the, the dhamma, and whoever sees this karma of the dependent origination will make you to achieve the full awakening, to achieve the full enlightenment. So here, this concept, when the Buddha said that whosoever sees dependent origination will see, will see the dharma, so dependent origination pertaining to the dependency or the, cause and the, the causes and conditions. So here, when we see that the when uh, when we see that that all the the composite things they come to be by dependence on cause and conditions, automatically we come to realize that things cannot possibly be permanent the composite thing should automatically be impermanent because that they come to being only by dependence on the causes and conditions. If that is the case, then where the causes and conditions is the, the, when, the, the, when they're gone, then what is produced also automatically disintegrates. So impermanence is given rise to the assessments of the impermanence is given rise to by this concept. And also that when you see that things are by the power of the causes and conditions, then you see that we don't have the freedom actually. And then this will also lead us to understand the suffering nature of the, the beings. And then on top of that, when we see that things are dependently coming to being by dependent causes and conditions, we see that we don't have this, the same self-nature, self, the independent nature, independent entity. So this will ultimately take us to the understanding of the, what is known as the selflessness <coughs> of the independent entity. And then uh, this also the, takes us to a very important understanding where when you see that we are nothing but the, the, com the, the conf configuration of the causes and conditions, and then, we, then the misconception that although my body is dirty, but there's a self I which is so important, which is so clean, and uh, this I which is of higher caste, high caste, and others are low cars, so this sense of the, 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 the 
ego or the basis of the caste. So we realize that, so actually I'm not paying, I'm just made of the causal conditions. And when the causal conditions, they are very dirty themselves, there's, not, there's no basis for to see myself as of higher caste, others of lower caste, we are all just the same. So this teaching on dependent origination is considered as the, the essence, as the quintessential of all the teachings of the Buddha. ま、でね、ちゃんげてそのとは。で、ジェンジェバルジョンシタボシェナステチェリアス。ね、データです。デヨナデジョンセ。ちょっと検定だって、参照の、これ検定で参照なんでヨナ。あの、デブテだって、
the results. So the, the causes as well should be multiple in nature. So multiple and impermanent nature. So this is known as the condition of impermanence, number two. Number three, not only that the cause should be, the, the condition should be impermanent, the condition must be concomitant, concomitant must be concomitant pertaining to the result or pertaining to the, the potentiality. So meaning that, say, the, if the result is, if the result is something a positive, then the cause as well should be positive. A negative cause cannot possibly give rise to a positive result. So this is known as the, the condition of the a condition of the concomitancy or the condition of the potentiality. So uh, when the, the, the Buddha said that because this exists, that exists, it indicates the first condition. Because this is produced, that is produced, indicates the second condition, condition impermanent. And because the ignorance, the volitional, um, the volitional karma arises, or the, the, the conditioned karma arises, because the conditioned karma, the consciousness arises, indicating the 12 lanes of dependent origination. So there, the Buddha is indicating the third condition. So what is dependent origination? Dependent origination is the things that come into being by the by with the help of the three conditions. ที่ชี้เตือนจุดเด่นของชีวิตนั่งกันเตือนจุดเด่นของชีวิตสุดที่การสร้างโครงสร้างทำมีทางทางด้านทุกข์การที่สิ่งเหล่านี้สุดที่
so that the if one knows the dependent origination classified into the two external and internal, we come to know that the self, I, which we consider is very important, this I survives. This I and the say, the is able to abide or is able to sustain only by dependence on external dependent origination and internal dependent origination. External dependent origination, as we said earlier, the, the basic four elements plus the, the space, the earth, fire, water, air. Say if the water, if there's a scarcity of water outside, again we cannot survive. And if there the heat is acute there, again we cannot survive. So we see that but fluctuation in external the elements, external dependent origination of the elements, um, we see that we're easily being affected. So we see that we don't really have the freedom. We don't really have the sense of the existing from our own side, from, from, our, from, from ourselves. But rather, we are heavily dependent on external factors. Then in turn also, we, um, we, come, into the, uh, we come into being by dependence on the, the, the basic the components like a body, the blood, the air, and so forth. So if anything happens to any of these components, we see that this, this eye instantly uh, disappears or it dies. It cannot sustain itself. So the point is, whereas on the contrary, um, the, our basic thought process is the very different. Um, we see that, oh, this is my body, and this is my mind. But I, this I, I am something very independent. I can sustain it the, by myself independently. In actuality, the, just with the, the slightest of the fluctuation in the external dependent origination and the internal dependent origination, this I is instantly altered. So we see that this I is something which is, which is totally lacking independence. So therefore, this I cannot possibly exist independently. It is, it is, it is empty of independent existence. ODDSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
and uh, yet another way of understanding dependent origination is again twofold. One is dependent origination of dependence on the causes and conditions. Number two, say for example, cause conditions, as we learned earlier, that any com the composite phenomena should necessarily come into being by dependence on the causes and conditions. Independent of the causes and conditions, things cannot necessarily necessarily they cannot possibly come into being. Then the other thing is that, for example, this flower, the flower that we see should necessarily come into being by dependence on the previous cause and conditions. This is the first level of the dependency, the causal dependency. Then number two is that the same flower, at the same time, is, it, it assumes that uh, the, the structure, that the, the appearance of the flower by dependence on many parts, many parts, so again, we see that by depends on this part, then a mind projects a sense of uh, the flower there. So this is known as the the let's say dependent origination of imputation by thoughts, by depends on the parts. So we see that there are two classes. Again, there are two. Uh, the the it, it, it is twofold. The understanding of dependent origination one the cause of depend dependency, and the number two dependent origination of dependence on the parts. And now we see that anything, anything that possibly exists, anything that possibly exists, uh, say any comp composite phenomena that possibly exists, for example, let's say the, the flowers, you know, so the prayer flags, prayer flags suspended in the air, or the, the, prayer, the prayer flags, they are they're flapping a lot. So actually, it is not the prayer flags itself flapping, as well as we are seeing it as flapping it so independently. In actuality, is the wind. Independent of the wind, the flag cannot really move. So it is by dependence of the movement of the wind that we see the, the flags to be the flag to be moving. In actuality, it is just a dependent origination. Likewise, we see that I am walking, I'm freely walking, I'm freely say jogging and so forth. So should the air, should the <coughs> air outside, should the air suddenly disappear? We cannot possibly walk. We will, we will just. We cannot re really, uh, without respiration, we cannot possibly walk. So therefore, even this, we say that oh, I'm taking um, the, I'm, uh, I'm taking a, a leisure walk. It is again purely dependent on origination by dependence on other factors that we able we, we call ourselves that I'm walking, I'm freely walking. Otherwise, it's not possible. It's all possible. And then we speak about I, this, the person, the I. So in the, the self, I. So um, the, the point is that what we really have is that um, we have the, the physical components, we have the mental component, components such as the, the mental thinking, the feelings, the, the discrimination, and so forth. It's on the basis of composition of these factors that we come to uh, come to have a sense of I. Independent of these factors, there is nothing here as a, the as a I which we consider otherwise as something so important and something so solid. Or the you that then that or the you that so that you that ball the matter ball you that ball the energy ball the matter ball you that matter ball the energy chamber the matter ball the energy chamber the matter ball the energy Oh, Yamichi 
Sengi Chana said, Yes, yes, I'm good. We see that as opposed to as opposed to accepting things existing by dependent uh, things existing by purely by dependent origination, there are there were uh, many the advocates of process production believing that things exist, things come to being independent of any cause conditions. It's not necessary to have cause conditions. So the, one people is uh, the they are advocates of such beliefs, and the, there are still others who believe that the, the causes are there, but the causes are independent. Causes are independently there, permanently there, and uh, then the some go into the extent of saying that finally, what truly exists independently there are the particles, particles. So finally, parts particles of the air, uh, which represent the independent existence of all phenomena. And then some other advocates, um, the believing in the the independent, the, the time, time as independent existent, and time is the one which is the creator of all phenomena. So the this by accepting such philosophy, invariably, uh, the pushes one to believe in independent existence, whereas Arindigarjuna in the, in the in prayers of the Buddha Shakyamuni, the transcendent, so there what he said is that on the contrary, the Buddha, what you taught was that you taught that all composite things should necessarily come into being by dependence on causal conditions, by dependence on the, the, the nature of the dependency. So this, this exposition of yours is something which is so objectively real, which cannot be denied through any reasoning and through any empirical the, the studies. So it is because of this that your proclamation of the reality of dependent origination is like the roar of the lions, which um, scares all other the wild animals or all other animals. So the, all other animals are referring to the advocates of the independent existence and the lion's roar of the Buddha's teaching indicated the teaching on dependent origination. Oh then you talk or Tada Shay Savana Sobo Mobu condition of Ramadu Suba Yomare, then the Jabarizumare, the Yina Dama runs the summer called the Karko with a sana, oh na then the Jabarizuma ye, then the Tava in Sambi Yomare. Tommy Maruba said it. Maribe thinking to cheese. Tommy Maruba, the social social nature is with your mother. Social Nedan Karim, but the social hack of your mother. The social Nedan, the Timber dog, the cold, some years until Maribas, only a social dog in nature to Tungu or Mare, nor is it Tungu or they said, Tommy Mariba Sora. So called Da, dear, Rama, you are Marete, ten to Tabar Jumare, ten to Tabarete, Nah, some Zaga. Tambo ダシンチャレンジだ。ああ、それ、ラマチで、シェンスシェンダシオラ。とんでもねえ、ちゃんがあせ、ラマサムで、そしてもまでよまれ、シェンダタンがそ、チェラーセ。ああ、それ、コン
那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个
Mindusia Shetanya so this, the sense of the clean, uh, creating a divide between self and others, and thus having an attachment to the self, a version of the other, a version of the other that's saying to us self, and the self, I, and we, when something, you hear something pleasant, you're very happy, and then something good things happen, again you're very happy, and um, mentally there's the ease there, they then, of the, the same thing, say when you hear something good thing, uh, good good things about the other side, other person, your enemies, there is uneasiness, not happiness, there's aversion. And then when some good things actually happen, not only hearing which happens, again you have a feeling of jealousy, unhappiness here. So this is what creates all the feeling of uneasiness within yourself, and it is very clearly indicated that when you are mentally unhappy, this is like the food, the food for anger. So just as, say, the, the food is responsible for to make somebody very strong and healthy, the, the food of the, 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 the mental unhappiness, mental unease, this is what strengthens and intensifies anger. So the, the, the anger is finally what ruins the self. Others? Yes, Never <laughs> Merchel <laughs> Love the your pay, meet, dream, boom, with two jars, love the winner, so can you, your mother. 
。但没去，可能去去拉不多，是那红红色的呢。说是说是没去，现在说的嘛都，现在没有去嘛，人家说，我听那个。当代，这都是做了，说是教的，这都是那那，那不要要马的噻，什么出国要马的噻，什么的各地那个，甚至日本要没加噻，特别东面中央的，甚至日本要没加噻，都是当地们这个跨省省要要啦，你那省市的这带的，我就要马啦，所以说省的怕，我不哩吧，我有钱给你搞的嘛都，平日这地方的在南山，所以说省的啊。那有多少人说呢？那各地那几百人马来钱了，搞些搞些搞点搞点点说说。So there's the the nature of the Chinese Feeling happy over material gains and feeling sadness over the loss of the material, the, the, the material loss, and with the feeling happiness over the praise, pleasant words, and happiness, and feeling unhappy over the the deprecation and the unpleasant words and the unhappiness. So we see that there are eight mundane concerns. So we are we are like a servant. We are like we are like a slave. Of the mundane concerns, and uh, say we're easily affected by the external world. Somebody, uh, somebody insults you. Instantly, we are mentally affected, bad affected. We become so demoralized. We become so sad. In actuality, it says that this world does not have any capacity uh, to harm your body. It cannot harm your body, and it cannot harm your mind. Let alone harming the body. It, 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 let alone harming the mind. It cannot really harm the body because the word is a physical thing, and the mind is something matter which has nothing to do with the physicality. So, how can the mind be affected by external words? And the this this however the, the vicious, however the harsh the words are, they cannot really affect your physical body. So when your physical body is not affected, when your mind is not affected, why should you be affected? So this is how we should. Um, to maintain a mind very calm and peaceful. Whereas, oftentimes, what it, what we happen, what happens is that when somebody insults you or says backbites you or says something unnice towards you, easily we are affected. Which means that we are so weak, um, we easily give in to the the mind. We don't we are the we don't control the mind. Mind controls you. So when the mind controls you, then you will never be happy. So why not? We make the we make ourselves the the master and make a mind a servant that the mind should not be affected by the external words. So if this is what we can do, it is that that the wise, the the, the wise people, they able to maintain calmness in the midst of the, the harsh words or the unruly words. So it says that the the another the very important. Point being mentioned by the, the great Tibetan masters is that same praise and deprecation. Why should they, they easily affect us? Because the praise, <coughs> if you think very carefully, if somebody says that you are just amazing, it will not really increase your qualities. Simply by somebody verbally saying that you're amazing, your qualities will not increase. And simply by saying some, somebody telling you that you are just a hopeless person, your qualities will not degenerate. So your qualities will be maintained as it is, no matter what the other person the comments on you, positively or negatively. So this is how we should be, we should not be easily affected by the extent the praise, deprecation, material gains, material loss, and then the pleasant words, unpleasant words, and happiness and the suffering and so forth. So this is when you remain unaffected by the external factors, such as the eight concerns, then your mind is forever at peace and cannot be affected by the external factors. Mm-hmm. 
我对这种的工作是他们这种的他的责任没下的但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求但他们说你要求求
that, oh no, I left this, I left that in my home, and they worry so much. And some people, they said, that when the whole nation is gone, so what is left for me to think about my small thing in my house? So when the whole the nation is flooded with water, so you can't expect one small thing, oh, I left that, I wish I could have brought it with me. So this, this will simply create more problem. One, we have already lost the, the object. Secondly, you have added the problem that I left it and the irritation is added. So this uh, this is something which is around points. And on the contrary, it is advice that, for example, say if you have lost some money and then you lost money, this is one loss. And then you think, oh no, the, I've lost it, no, I'm very, I'm very unfortunate. You are actually building, you are adding another the, the say pain and irritation with yourself. On the contrary, if you think that, okay, I lost it, it's fine, but somebody who's ever found it, that person will benefit, will benefit out of this. I'm lucky that somebody's going to use this money. That's good. So if, you, if this is how you train, it will keep your mind very calm and peaceful. And then some people, they think it in a very positive way that, okay, <coughs> say the I lost this money, is fine. But it's not that I lost everything. At the time of death, in any ways, I'm going to lose everything. I will leave everything behind me. So luckily, I'm not dead. So I will, the, even though I don't have one bread for this afternoon, but at least I can look for more food and so forth. And to get the say, I, I, I have not lost everything. So at time of death, I'm going to lose everything. So as compared to that, what I've lost now is nothing. It's very small. I can make it up, make it up. Okay, this, this way of training would be extremely helpful for us to practically maintain our mind at ease, calm, and peaceful. Okay. ทุกคนนี้ทุกคนอยู่ to ไม่ใช่ในพันธุ์ตัวอยู่มาเรื่อยสิพันธุ์ตรงกันในพันธุ์มาเรื่อยสุดๆในพันธุ์มาเรื่อยดูกันตัวละยืดดูสัญญาบ
um, the, the Buddha taught the concept of impermanence. So there the Buddha said, whatever gathers will end in separation. Whatever is birth, whatever is born, will end in death. Whatever is accumulated will end in exhaustion. Whatever, whatever, whatever rises to a height will fall eventually. So the, these are the, the four things pertaining to impermanence for the Buddha taught. So the pertaining to this, the first one, is when the Buddha said, when whatever is gathered will end in uh, the separation. So the family, when speak about the family, we see that the, a group of people come together in the form of a family, the husband, wife, and the children, they come to the family. So the, the point is that what we do is, we don't think about the impermanence. Instead, when we are together, we fight. We fight, we quarrel, there's always, we just blame each other and so forth. We are together, we don't enjoy, we keep fighting. Then we, when we separate, then we regret, we cry, we lament. So this is, this is just the, the what, the, the, being, uh, the state of dichotomy. Dichotomy, um, which is directly in opposition with, with what ought to be done. So on the, the whereas, whereas, what actually we should be doing is that while we're together, enjoy that moment of being together. Enjoy the moment rather than fighting. Because the Buddha said that the gathering ends in separation. This is the nature, the law of nature. So, and likewise the Buddha said, the, say, the, um, the youth ends in old age. And then the health, good health ends in sickness ends with sickness, and the wealth ends in poverty, and the, the, the life ends with death. So these are the realities of life. So if you know that these are the realities of the life, so Buddha very clearly indicated and um, indicated that these are the realities of life. While we are together, enjoy the moment and be harmonious, be friendly, be compassionate towards each other, instead of fighting, just take that as an opportunity, coming together as an opportunity for one to practice compassion, for one to practice love and affection. And so it is, this is opportunity. And then we can expand, we can intensify and expand our practice of love and affection. So, uh, and when the, 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 the reality of life strikes us, the Buddha indicated, the Buddha advised us not to worry Okay, so whereas the oftentimes, as I said earlier, the, in, the concept of impermanence, it is not to actually cre create a sense of fear in us. This is, not the, the, this is not the intention. Intention is to tell us that we are a guest on this earth. So just be mindful of how a guest should be behaving in a guest house, that the guest will behave nicely, will enjoy the time there in the guest house, will never think of uh, staying there permanently. So knowing that, eventually, after two days, three days, whatever, um, I have to vacate this place because there are guests here. If you know this, then when you leave, you have no problem. And when you are there, you will enjoy the moment there. Likewise, if you know the reality of impermanence, that we are together, this is just temporarily. We are together as a family. This is very temporarily. So this very short moment of being together, um, the, we will um, we will not create problem. Instead, we'll enjoy this moment. We'll be harmonious. We'll be friendly, and we'll support each other. So, the end, we will the, so practice love and affection towards each other. So, if this is how we do, then when the actual separation strikes us, hits us, uh, we will not be affected as much pertaining to the, the limitation the worries, anxieties, and so forth. Oftentimes, what happens is people, when they're together, when they live together, they, they don't think about the separation. And because of which, they think that we will be together for the all together, for, for eternally. And then we keep fighting amongst each other. We, we just create, we keep we not enjoying. And then when the actual separation happens, then you just, just go into acute depression. And oftentimes, the who's left behind, the tends to die 
very soon after the demise of the other person. These are very unwise way of thinking. So we should be, let's say, we should know about this reality. When the Buddha indicated that that the say the the, the health is followed by illness, the youth is followed by old age, and the wealth is followed by the, the poverty, the loss of the wealth, and the birth is and will end by death. So this if we can reflect, and the Buddha said that when these actually strike, you should not worry while you are while you are enjoying these four moments, you should be really appreciate of these moments. And then uh, yes Okay, so um, the we'll invite a few questions, maybe two two or three questions. Um, okay, the mic will the circuit the will be given. Okay. One here. Uh, good okay, evening. Okay, also the one point is that the questions make it really very precise because we don't have time and we try to give the opportunity to as many uh, people as possible. Yes. Good evening. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so I, I would like it to uh, be possible to, to get uh, uh, a little bit more of explanation regarding the third condition of the dependent origination about the uh, concomitants, uh, because you mentioned that from a, a positive cause uh, there should come a positive result, but I was thinking that also the, the opposite would happen from a negative uh, cause. So we, uh, we can also appreciate positive results. You were mentioning the example of the invention of Tibet, and that's beyond negative, that's an horrendous cause, but uh, also somehow it has had the effect of the expansion of Tibetan Buddhism in the world. So. Uh, I would like a bit of explanation regarding the concept of concomitants. Okay, thank you. The question is very good. Um, did you follow the question? No need to repeat. Okay, the question, the three conditions. The third one, the condition of concomitancy, meaning that the result and the cause should be concomitant, should be similar in nature. If the, the result is positive, the cause must be positive. If the result is negative, it must. It infers that the, the cause should be negative. On the contrary, the reality that we see is different. Using Tibet is negative, and then the proliferation of Tibetan Buddhism is positive. So the cause is negative, but the result is positive. So this, uh, how do we cons reconcile the two things? And again, this kind of sounds the and the Two Yabumarovas, <laughs> で、で、それで so here the uh, the <coughs> condition of the concomitancy. So here what we need to know is that when a plant 
the seed of chini, we cannot expect sweet things growing out of that. Right? So the, if you plant a chili, chili will grow, but there is the what? Hot things will grow, not the sweet things will grow. So this is the connotation of the, the what? The condition of concomitancy. So whereas losing Tibet, loss of Tibet as a cause, and as the one factor, and then the say what follows is the spread of the Tibet Buddhism all over the world. So these two things, it is not necessary that if we lose Tibet, then the Buddhism should thrive in the other world. It is not necessary. So the thriving Buddhism to the, the world over, this is because of other causes, because the people in the world, they take interest in this. If no one in the world take interest in Tibetan Buddhism, then even if Tibet <laughs> lose, Tibet is lost, so the Tibetan the Buddhism may not necessarily um, the flourish. So the point is that it so happens that seems like the two things, Tibet loss, Tibet and Buddhism flourish. Right? So it is, in terms of time, is very true. First one is of the, the first moment, and the next is the flourishing, this happens. But the flourishing itself is not because that, that Tibet was lost. <laughs> so in case, if this is the cause, loss of Tibet is the cause for the proliferation of Tibetan Buddhism, then the moment Tibet begins independence, Buddhism may decline. <laughs> okay, the next question. Okay, let's say if we miss, yes. Hi, good evening. Uh, I've come uh, here for the first time. And uh, my question is that is the covenant on Ahimsa, non violence, for not causing harm absolute? And uh, the supplementary to that is that if harm and violence is caused uh, by a distant action, not by my immediate action, but you know, something that will uh, follow out of my action, uh, harm or violence, violence is caused to something or someone. I can you repeat the question? Please repeat the question. My question is that, uh, very simply, uh, is the uh, is, is the prescription of ahimsa or non-violence or not causing harm to anyone absolute? What do you mean by the, since a very philosophical question, mm -hmm. so the, the concept of ahimsa, is it not absolute? Is it absolute or is it not absolute? What do you mean by absolute? Absolute is that ahimsa is not ahimsa. Uh, Himsa or no violence. matter what situation, ahimsa should be practiced. Yes. What you say? Yes. No matter what situation, it should yes. be practiced. Yes, but I, so I which means it's more like the the what you call it the pacifism. No, no, my the belief in pacifism. I am asking whether violence is allowed or not. Okay, this is more like pacifism. Yeah. So the ahimsa in the context of ultimate meaning, pacifism should be practiced, meaning that no matter what, no wars, no the say the no wars. The number semi she was it. Semi she was it. Again, carry tevine that semi she was on. Father Chobes. Again, carry tene. That can I gain can she water? Any torture with the child. What a dirty console. Can they join in a go? So much a matter. The meeting is in the area. 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 I get on Trado, that you need to show on the Sony, the chair, call New Gi, you remember, the chair, call the chair, you marry so that. The Koran Judy and Mishibe among what you are called, or those you are a ticker, no teacher, did you say a touchy chair with a soda? To when you more trust it, you more than the consummate chair. Call some of the changing logic, love what she gave you, call Chego at the other, some of the current daughter, Tipa, she ate a touchy chair with a mother, call in the machine, that you are marrying so that they do. 
Kusuchenda in fact, um, to this question, the answer is that no matter what, I'm saying it should be practiced. Because the Buddha very clearly indicated that um, creating a scenario where one individual person may say that, okay, if somebody harms me individually, harms me personally, to me personally, okay, I can, I can be patient, I can bear it, I can suffer. When it comes to, if they come to destroy Buddhism, if they come to destroy the Buddha's statues, like this, so there the Buddha said that even then you have to practice the Ahimsa, because that the, these people, they are trying to destroy the Buddha's statues, stupas, and so forth. The Buddha's statues and stupas, harming them, the Buddha is not harmed, the Buddha cannot be harmed, right? So there we have to maintain the, the spirit of Ahimsa, and instead, uh, these people, why they are doing this is out of ignorance. Because they are doing this out of ignorance, um, they deserve your compassion rather than anger. So, the, the, it is very clearly indicated that how, should, how can I think of removing the uh, ignorance so that this bad action will not happen. And um, to summarize this, it is said that the Buddha's will see the afflictions, negative thinking as enemies, not the person who has the negative thinking. This is uh, the, this is, this should be the basic principle. So therefore, whereas, whereas in, the, in a, some other contexts, we speak about highly realized beings, highly realized beings involved in, you know, what is superficially seen as the harmful to others and so forth. So there, the, it is very different. It's not actually harming the person. Mm -hmm. It seems to be harmed, but then because of spiritual realization, you are able to lead the other person to a higher domain of the existence and so forth. So that's a very different discussion. Mm -hmm. But according to the conventional understanding, we should always maintain a sense of right and stuff. Okay, the next question. Could you put some light on the location of mind Okay, raise your hands. Okay. The Kongi, the Sim, Shiva, the Kongi, the Yuris. Okay. The Kongi, the Shiva, the Signi, the Kongi. More than that. Shiva, the Dako, Chikka, so that. The Jivinia, the Ningse, the Jivinia, the Sigura, the Taina, the Sata. Uh, okay, the Before I give the, uh, the, give the translation, maybe the next book will be the last question. Okay, one over there, right? Okay, others will get a chance tomorrow because it's already 8.20. Many people should be it's going to be too late for people. Okay, the answer is, the answer given is that the mind exists in the body and in some sources it's the, it says that the mind exists at the heart but the mind is very closely connected with the energy and the energy flows in the channels so the mind exists within that domain where the energy flows. So in simple terms we can say the mind exists in the body. Okay, maybe the last question. The last question, yes. Uh, uh, my question is like, uh, uh, the marking others leads to uh, um, aversion. aversion and attachment, but even for compassion and bodhicitta, we need others. 
So how to, you know, I, it, it, it's a bit confusing. Okay, the question is, if when we demarcate the self and the others, then it invariably arises, it invariably arises attachment aversion, right? But it may not be true. For bodhicitta, there's no aversion, there's love and affection. But for that, we need to have the demarcation in the self and others. Okay, good question. Then again, this kind of sense. ダイヨナ我也不知道啊 那個什麼大家我聽說的嘛,什麼什麼東西啊,就是說的。so here the separation of the self and the self and others. So when this separation happens, it does not necessarily uh, give rise to attachment to the self and aversion to others. But what is that here is that when this split happens and then the additional factor, what is known as the inappropriate attention, viewing self as more important and the view of others as the ones who impedes, who, um, who comes in the way to your happiness, then the aversion arises. So whereas the self and others do exist, these two things do exist on that basis and we can practice compassion and and so forth, but in the normal situation, where the, this divide is created, then the additional factor is the inappropriate attention. Viewing the self, viewing the self, viewing the self, the as more important inappropriately, and viewing others as less, less important, and factors of which harm my happiness and so forth, then the aversion and attachment arise, arise here. Okay, thank you. So we'll end with the quick dedication prayer. Okay, for the dedication prayer, we'll turn to uh, the page 278. <coughs> eight. Okay, tomorrow we'll start the class at, at the 6 sharp. So that we can have more question answers in the end. Okay, let's turn to page 278. In the land and circle, by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful charities, it ends in God, so please remain on to see our hands. Just as a brief magistrate and some of the Bhagavad too realize things as they are. Also, I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow the perfect example. 
And I think all these rules of virtue with the dedication praise is the best, but the two response does go on the three times, so that I might perform the noble Buddhist of the deeds. May the Supreme Bodhicitta, that is not a risk in rising grow, and may that which is a risk in not diminish to increase very well more. Challenges of the Actions, I could attain the seal of Guru Buddha and these all beings without exception into the enlightened state. I dedicate the merit does get it towards the realization of the deeds and the prayers of all the Buddhas and the Buddhist novels of the three times and to the Buddha and the Dharma of teaching and realization. May I know all life through the force of this merit, never separate from the four wheels of the mind and vehicle, and accomplish all the stages of the path and renunciation of Bodhicitta perfect with the two stages. For the wish of free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach the full enlightenment. In spite of the wisdom and compassion, today the Buddha's presence, I tell the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious Buddha in their heart. A part of the of is, is lucidly explained by the protector of both the Dharma and the beings must know that. Will the Lord so that that in the Azo be sufficiently in the view of wishes of fulfilled spontaneously? May the operations of evil positives of the negative forces of humans or non humans, or however managed to pervert it, <coughs> and be totally vanquished through the power of the truth of the three jewels. In all my life, never separated from perfect gurus, may enjoy the magnificent dharma by completing the qualities of the stages of the paths, may quickly attain the state of my jatara. Throughout my future lifetimes, may always be guided by a free and be able to uphold the Dharma in general and the teachings of the dependent origination, in particular, in the universe of life. Okay, so I uh, will continue with the teaching tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And as I said earlier, see if you can read the, uh, the, the text in praise of the dependent origination. Okay, thank you.